seeing the world going to Sheikh Mall and the early childhood. Because I, I would imagine your childhood have been very different than you know. And growing up in the Trans Himalayan area you know, as, as a mountain person um, would be interesting for our audience to uh, hear about. Yeah. Thank you. And it's always yeah, lovely hearing stories also. Uh, yeah, like uh, as we all know, like when we speak about Ladakh, we like oh Ladakh, everybody wants to come. And, uh, like oh, it's a peaceful place, and it is uh, a foreign tourist destination. Like that's true. That's uh, that's how I always give the different description. Ladakh is like yes, it's a beautiful place. And when people say they only describe only the beautiful, you know. But as I remember my childhood, my people are asking how my childhood was. It's not only the beautiful and clean airs and like uh, seeing pictures and the photos, but there's we have some our own culture. And as I was just sharing with you all, like the way we came in uh, our tour. So my life was uh, very, like, you know, born in 4,300 like, uh, meters like, in the high. And it was, it was very challenging. I still remember, like, you know, when I go to Europe or West or Japan, everybody asks me, oh, you're coming from Himalaya or Naran. But then I say, how I explain now? Because I'm not a philosopher, I'm not a... Like you know, history and I'm not I'm a simple man, you know, born in um, Ladakh and Himalaya. But there is something which I can share with the people with you all, like uh, how I born. So it was I still remember with my sister. So I was a shepherd taking care of all my animals, like sheep, goat, yaks, uh, deer. But today I'm very proud of that. Because if I not get that one, I don't think so today I'm a, like a filmmaker. You know? mm -hmm. I don't mean like only filmmaker, whatever I do today in my life. You know? But that's why root is very important. Uh, root, because sometimes we say like, oh, where are you from? And sometimes some people are a little shy to share that, you know, which part of you are, you know, which region you are, you know, which religion you are, you know. Why that? For this is a big question. So I'm proudly telling me myself that I'm from Ladakh. I'm from the shepherd community. I born in the shepherd, you know. So this is what I uh, my life was. Uh, but it is very challenging, very difficult. Even like I told you, till now I was 13 years old. I never seen the television. But this, on the other hand, I'm very happy because it is what I do film today. You know, like I done like several movies, like uh, three fiction movie. One mm -hmm. is called yeah, uh, Tears. One is Win with Chu. Then one is called like uh, The Will of Life. And there another is called the three fiction movie, which got quite uh, popular in the Dalai. So and then it translated in French language in the other, uh, some other countries are screening there. But those are everybody are telling me it's look very original. They say you know the movie is not copy from someone. It's look very original. Then I think that because of my heart, because of my yeah childhood memories, is what I think. Yeah, I, I think I'll come back. So what we'll do is we'll you know um, set it up and then we'll open it up for you all questions. Uh, and I'll try to build up uh, the story yeah. of his own journeys as an artist, as a filmmaker, and, and I want to draw your attention back to something that you said earlier in the afternoon, that it is very important to tell your story. But I do understand, to tell one's own story, uh, one has to cut through so much of external influences, you know, which are very powerful. So how did you, uh, in your own way, figure out your own voice or your artistic sensibility? What were your influences? Well, I understand Sekmol would have been an influence. But beyond that, I think you would have met so many different people in your own life. So what were your formative influences as an, as an as a thinking person, as an artist? Uh, you know, like, sometimes, like, we, what we, like, 
it's not only blame, you know, we go to uh, school, university, colleges, you know. When we're going to, like, when we're going in school education, whatever, like, we, and then we forget our rules, you know. This is a big mistake, what I, like, see now in the, when after living in the European countries more than more than 30 years. And uh, at the same time, like, I was sharing you, know, in school, we it teach us like you know information and knowledge, you know. But then in the rules what we're coming, it also showing us the like, you know, wisdom. This is our daily I uh, make it differentiate. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share you a few stories yeah. like that. Uh, uh, maybe you might heard about like uh, I was like four times or three times or four times I failed in ten standard examination. I did deliberately. Because what I'm studying in the school, it is not connected, it is not related with what I'm studying, you know. So, I still remember in 80s. In 80s, all our teachers are coming from Jammu, Srinagar to Ladakh. Students, to, when the teacher coming from Srinagar to uh, our Jammu to Leh, they send as a punishment to Ladakh. Because uh, Ladakh is that time is sort of a very remote place. Nobody wants to come there. The road is closed, and then <coughs> you all are here have a running water. We don't have a running water in there, but we have another beautiful uh, places, you know, beautiful way of living. So when teacher come to uh, Leh, and I still remember, and we had Ladakhi our own dress, beautiful Ladakhi dress, like what he is wearing, you know. And then what uh, we have uh, armed Ladakhi uh, food there. When uh, we having Ladakhi food and our teachers telling us, you know, you eating champa? Because this champa is not good for your health. It will block your brain, you know. So we are very confused. What, why this food is so bad? And they say, what you wearing your traditional dress? All these traditional days are like uh, uh, bad smelling, is coming from animals, you know. So we are completely confused, you know. And then we were in the school and we're telling uh, the, our teachers, and then we, we go back to our home. Our parents say, the teachers are the, like a god, you know. Mm -hmm. One teacher says, you have to throw that, you know. So between we are almost suicide, you know, because uh, the, in the parents says, like, you know, teacher says it's important, that the teacher says what you eating, what you wearing, it is also like, like this, we lost our whole culture. That stuck in my mind, you know, no, it's not right. Because whatever, and they're sometimes they're beating us, and like this or that, this is not right. You know? And then what we're reading in the in, in the textbooks, you know, always we have to read about the elephant, always we have to read the train, always we have to, it's nothing about Ladakh, you know. Ladakh, we have the snow. Mm -hmm. Why we have to read, uh, read about the monsoon, you know? We have like, you know, yaks and horses. Why, Why to read about the yeah, other things, you know? We are living in minus 20. We have to read about the fan, you know, because we don't need in Ladakh fan, you know. So these are really stuck in my mind. I don't want to study. I wanted to do something different. But uh, people say you are crazy. You are like, why are you not? You are not a normal uh, student like this. But then when I go to the exam, all the questions are for me like this. So I didn't really be writing very something. Sometimes I write all my question paper in some essay which is not connected you know, that I was sent, you know. So then later I built in the Sagmol. Sagmol is a student education culture movement of Ladakh, where you many of my heard about who created the artificial glaciers, uh, then like uh, the theories, you know, whatever all these. So the characters there's an ad, yeah. you know, and then come, I'll get him back to Sagmol. Sagmol's story is very important. So the context is this. The state of Kashmir, the erstwhile state of Kashmir, uh, had three predominant regions: Jammu, uh, Kashmir, the Valley of Kashmir, and then you have Kargil and uh, Ladakh. Within Ladakh, it's a different place. <coughs> now, the politics of that space was I was talking about. The language hegemony yeah. was always controlled from Srinagar, your medium of education, right? So, if you are a group of people, you do not identify with the hegemonic structure, meaning if you are forced down Urdu, your own language, you are not studying in school. And that was this entire battle that all their generation and then Sekmol came about, which is to bring about Ladakhi language to textbooks. 
you know. So that was this huge battle, and people like him, and many of people like him, he's been lucky to come out and find his own voice. Many people would have been destroyed by this confusion in the scene, yeah. right? Just, just uh, imagine the sheer pressure. And I think just taking on from his experience, if you were to blow it up, look at what we are doing with our own indigenous communities in different parts of the country, the same problem. And that gives rise to the conflicts that we are seeing around the country. Right? So I think Sekmal's story is also very interesting. Uh, it was taken in by Bollywood and Amir Khan did this film called Three Idiots. This is the story of Kumsu Kwangru. But Kumsu Kwangru is not the real name of the person. The name, real name is Sonam Wangchuk. Sonam Wangchuk. Sonam Wangchuk. Sonam Wangchuk comes from a you know, family of politicians you know, in the parliament. Uh, and Sonam is very interesting because he had a very good education. And he created this alternative space that you know, Kunsuk Wanglu creates in the film, but it is real. Sekmal is real space where he manages to get in experts from all kinds of areas to come into Ladakh and work with young people who are struggling to get a decent education or who are questioning the education structure, right? And that, you know, we will get back to Sekmal and his experiences in Sekmal and what kind of influences he had when he comes out of the formal schooling system into an alternative space, right? So that I think is very interesting. Yeah, even like that time, like even you see the results of 10 matriculation, 10 examinations, you know, 90 persons are failed in Ladakh. Mm -hmm. So nobody is questioning why 90 percent students are failed. Because everybody thinks students are eating tampa and they're wearing their traditional dress, that's why they failed. But Sonamang Chu, who raised the question, you know, no, if students are not failed, if the system is failed. And then, like the people like me who don't want to go in school again, that's what I want to say. You are not fair, you know. We know you. The, the system is fair. That's how he fight for uh, change the education medium from uh, when we go to the school, you know. We have to first, we have a Ladakhi language. We speak all Bodhi and Tonka and whatever we have to learn. We are quite good in that. After that, we have to go to learn Urdu because Urdu is our. Uh, language. Like in a state language. Yeah. Okay, we are good in Urdu, we speak good Urdu, we can write good Urdu. And suddenly we are in the eighth standard, we have to learn the English. English is a Rashtriya Vaishya, like you know, we have the Hindi. Oh, okay, so we are able to speak in Hindi, write in Hindi. No, no, Hindi is not good, we have to write, like, go to the English, you know. So, five languages we have to go, we are good in some, somewhere, good in the language. But if you ask to uh, some of us what is the physics gravi uh, gravity, you know, it's completely difficult for us because we state more the language, you know. That's how the segment change in the system, you know. But then somehow this alternative uh, school was like thousands of youth, not only from the you know, from all over the world, people come here and discuss like, what we had here before. That's how I did this segment. So I'm a, one of the lucky also because I've been with Sonamuchu one more student here. So then I have learned. So then I, I get into my life. I, I think Sekmol is also very interesting place. If any of one of you have a chance to go to Ule, go visit Sekmol. Uh, it, it is very much uh, <coughs> structure is a lot of hands-on learning, which is hands-on in the sense the problems of the place, you develop your own solutions. You know, so people work together to develop their own solution. And it is not, you know, that this problem where you are in Ladakh uh, and you're only talking about elephant or the monsoon. <coughs> it doesn't connect to, yeah. you know, your own local reality. And that is the problem with a lot of this <coughs> mainstream education. It does not get beyond the classroom and, and the teachers who are the, you know, the God <coughs> as our families tell us, the teachers have also issues in terms of how do you reach out to your own. So those are the kind of things you can take on and one could imagine two different communities or linguistic minorities that we have in this country today across different streets. So I think from his experience, we can imagine what is happening elsewhere. Right. So, okay, so let me cut back to your, uh, so, 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 so how did you uh, take to filmmaking? What were the impulses? What were your earliest impulses when Somehow you felt that okay, this is yeah. my space. Yeah, and then like uh, as uh, when I was in the Sekmo, there is a big movement 
is called OMA, Operation View Of. Because now we wanted to test the efficacy. We can't be like that. Somebody has to test the wires. You know? Otherwise, everybody is listening, able to say, oh, nice, you have good. It's not. Somebody doing some, do something is important for the plan. And the one chip, sorry, one chip, and he said that we have to make a team and we have to go to each village, we have to form an education uh, committee. You know? It's called VEC, uh, Village Education Committee. So as you know, Ladakh, we have the area is much bigger than Srinagar and Jammu. We are so scared, you know. So we have to go one place to another place. It took sometimes five days, sometimes ten days, sometimes fifteen days. So we going to each village, sometimes with the horses, sometimes by walk, and all this we go there. And what happened? First we say, oh, we have the education movement. All the villagers come, you know, and they are listening to us. Oh, it's nice. Second time we go there, only few people come in. Oh, it's, these people are saying the same thing, you know. Then we got the idea, why we not make a movie, you know. Movie means like very simple, basic movies, you know, sort of like audiovisual is how it is so powerful, you know. We have a basic, very basic recorder, basic camera. We record it uh, in Ladakhi languages. Till that we only uh, have a language in Hindi or Urdu or English, you know. And then we make a sort of drama, very basic. And we went with the projector in the villages. And this, oh, today we have a film screening. Come to watch the films, you know. But film is then everybody was saying, wow, films, you know. Instead of hundred people, from three years old children till like eighty years old people, everybody coming to watch the movie, you know. So then there is a no movie. There is a talk again on the education, you know. There. Love to hear about the own language, the common language on their films. You know. So then I really thought, you know, wow, this audio visual is something so powerful. This is my film, you know. Even like I don't want becoming a big filmmaker. I wanted to use this medium to be a sort of a revolution for the evolution for the campaign, you know. It becomes such a powerful. So later I realized, wow, audio visual is very powerful, you know. So then I thought that I wanted to do study more, but when I come to Jammu University to do my PhD, the media is already very powerful, you know. So that's how I use all this media. So in the beginning, just for basic thing to support the movement. Correct. But later, I become even. Interesting. Yeah. There's another context for you to get your uh, picture in the head right, which is in, if you look at the number of districts in India. Uh, we have about 600 districts in India. So the biggest district in India is Kutch, which is in Gujarat. The second biggest district is Ladakh, right? The way it was structured earlier, now it's in Union Territory since August 5, uh, which means, as you was mentioning, Ladakh is bigger than Kashmir Valley or Srinagar, right? In geographical land space. Jammu also. And Jammu, and Jammu, right? So, and the landscape is also interesting because it is trans Himalayan desert in a sense. When he talks about monsoon, the monsoon doesn't exist in that landscape. Right? You see clouds coming in, dark clouds, and they don't come down. They just touch you in your skin, skin and go by. Right? It is an easy experience for somebody who's come and grown up in plains to experience those dark clouds. In Ladakh is an experience. I haven't experienced the winter. I have seen the clouds in Ladakh. <laughs> But that would be a separate experience. Yeah. But I should say now, because of changing weather, mm. because of changing of climate, you know, weather is also now touching. Uh -huh. So this is another sad story for Ladakh. And uh, like many people think like Ladakh, we can, like, you know, Ladakh is very, like, uh, resource, uh, like, whatever, like, you know, very uh, fragile, very fragile place, you know. And uh, you might have heard about like 2010 flash flood, you know. I still remember that day. In 2010 peak hours, more than like 400 people dead because of the cloud pass. In 30 years of, uh, like in 30 years, one degree increasing in the temperature, you know. And which now you are right, in the past, the monsoon is never reached. After the Kashmir, after somewhere, it go back to in many India, you know. So that's how we are like, uh, like totally dry desert there. So since uh, 30 years, uh, increasing one degree in the temperature, 
because of changing of climate, we are facing a big, big problem. That's why I want to share you another one movie. Uh, it's called uh, Jumwa, The Broken Diamond. I made that movie uh, based on how climate change is like in Lada. So I got the opportunity to screen in this movie in uh, COP21 in Paris. Mm -hmm. It's a big summit to how climate change. There was 195 prime ministers and presidents mm -hmm. and members were selected for that. So this is how another issue which uh, we will be sharing the movie will not go in deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So COP21 that he's talking about was, you know, the entire agenda was set up in Paris for a climate accord. But with Trump coming in, he's not even signing that accord. He doesn't even acknowledge that the climate change that we're seeing around is caused by human that will just go by. You know, so that's another kind of a political economy of climate. We will not talk about it here because I can go on. So we come back to Stanzin and his work. So yeah, so coming back, uh, so from Sekmol, the you know work that you were trying to do, organizing in the villages, and you, you stumble upon uh, the audiovisual uh, world, you know, and then you start working on, 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 on the space. What I find very interesting of the limited work that I've done, I, I, I realized that you had made about 10 or 12, I think not 70, so that's, you know, an education for me. Uh, 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 so a couple of things that struck me watching uh, separate days of the glaciers and now growing in, in, in uh, Ladakh. Your comfort in, <coughs> ask them to get in, na? they wanted to be here, just ask them to get in. Yeah, yeah, yes. Please, please come in. It's what? Right. And he had the camera, the big lens, that's why. Sorry. So, I, I just want to uh, get you back, uh, or rather my observation has been, for a filmmaker to work with members of the family, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I know it's not very really easy to work with members of the family. We all have family issues, and all kinds of things come up with people in your family. Uh, in separate of the glacier, the way you went back and lived as a shepherd uh, for three years, you know, working with your sister, and then this film, working with your niece and your mother. Uh, getting into you know the storytelling process i just wanted to get into your own working method working with the family because of what, what is very interesting for me as a documentarian your choices of subject are varied from climate to getting into the family which i understand all of them are changing one constant variation that i see or constant variable that i see in your work is you are looking at the space that you grew up in and certain things that are changing yeah you know whether it's because of modernity whether it is because of uh, effects of climate which is from industrialization and the way we live yeah. and how all of it is coming through in a fabric of our existence so i thought if we could get into that that would yeah. be something interesting yeah right. two three things you know because one thing is like uh, if we see more than like 11 years before how ladakh was independently like, if you see ladakh there's no poor at all mm -hmm. people are very healthy good sanitation and everything they had, you know, because I remember myself, you know, when I go to home, I get full of things to eat, you know, really like uh, we have like, you know, barley fields, we have a uh, gardening, we have like 700 uh, sheep and goats, we have like uh, 300 yaks and horses. When you go in the village, you will feel, wow, we are living village, you know, you are living such a village, you know. And then when you live there, it's like a moonland, you know, very thin air, very difficult. You have to walk, you know. Without walk, you will get nothing. So then, there is a very limited resources, you know. How to utilize these resources since many centuries, my ancestor, my father, my grandfather, whoever, you know. That knowledge is dying now, you know. So then, I never realized this is important. That I only realized after I been in European countries, you know. That's why I wanted to share you one story, why Shepherdess of the Glacier has come in a different way. Uh, as I told you, uh, when I was in 2015, COP21, my this other movie, Jumwa Broken Time, mm -hmm. I was screening that movie uh, in Paris. It was 195 uh, the yeah. countries and presenting 40,000 guests from all over the world. I screened it and then I explained about uh, India, Ladakh, and so many people are saying, oh, Ladakh is India? I say, yeah, it's in India. And then I was just putting them, you know, please, 
India, you don't look like a zoo or like a living museum. We have much longer, so whatever. So people like my movie. After that, I am living in Lyon. Mm. So from going from Paris to Lyon, it is almost like, like two hours, you know. And that time, my producer are very happy. And my producer said, Sanjay, you always travel with the low price train. Mm. This time, you must go in the TGV. You know. mm. TGV is the fastest train, which covers like which is that when the TGV imagine if you take the train from Waterloo Station yeah. in London yeah. and take the underground, yeah. the underground below the you know uh, channel, yeah. and you get to Gare du Nord, it takes <laughs> about two hours. I don't know, like it's so fast, yeah. and you must go in the luxury train. Yeah. Then I said, like we have to, we will pay for it. I said, no, no, for me it's fine. I'm, I'm always happy to do travel in the low price train, and they put me deliberately in the luxury train. Within in few seconds I was inside the train and three beautiful ladies came inside. You know. When I look at them, they look gorgeous, you know. <laughs> so I said like what to do now? You know, I was so shy. <laughs> I was looking like this and like this, they have a, a beautiful table on the table. They have the red wines and like this. And when I look at them and like you know, uh, they have very short shortcuts and like uh, when I look at their uh, bags you know it was very expensive brand you know I smell the one of the most expensive perfume from pa Paris you know oh I say like two hours for me it's six hours you know so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Torture. yeah it's a torture you know. then I just I, I always like this I can't like Take my leg, if I leg, so I touch them, and so like if you French uh, fashion in Paris, yeah. that's amazing. I was looking like this, <laughs> and then suddenly one just asked me, and he asked me, why are you shy? I say like, no, I'm comfortable, it's okay, fine. And then slowly they tried to talk to me, and then said they told, asked me, where are you coming? And I told them that I'm from India. But then they told me, you don't look like me. <laughs> yeah. But then I told that India is bigger than Europe. Yeah. You know? So we have the south, north, east. I'm from Himalaya, from Ladakh. You are from Ladakh? Himalaya? They know Ladakh. Mm -hmm. Because of the clambers of the many foreigners being there. Wow, you are from Himalaya. The same thing, like clean air, yeah. like this. So I said, yes. And suddenly, like having red wine after we have become a friend, we have a discussion, you know. Suddenly, there is some sensations in my body, what I was <coughs> telling, you know. Wow, my sister, you know, who is living in 4,000 meter high, you know, 6,000 meter high, you know. Mm -hmm. She not know the red wine, she not know all this modernity. I was more surprised than the, the three ladies than my sister, you know. I took my pen and copy and started writing the story. And they asked me, what are you writing? I say, I have a sister who is a street shepherd in the mountain. And she lived alone with 350 sheep and goats. Yeah, uh, 300 sheep and goats in the mountain. And they didn't believe, you know. And she was telling me, you know, this story is amazing, you know. I have the most luxury car. I have the luxury bedroom, bathroom. I travel all over the world. Like, you know, this is, you are really telling the story, this really exists, you know. Mm -hmm. I think this is my own sister. Mm -hmm. They can't believe, you know. Then they say, oh, why you don't make a movie, you know. Mm -hmm. So it stopped me, you know, so I started writing. Mm -hmm. So I said, this uh, would be very interesting. Then I asked them, what do you do, you know. And she said, I mean, what, do you watch sometimes fashion TV? I said, yeah, I watch the fashion TV. So she told me, I'm a model for fashion TV. And what you told me, the story is amazing. You, know, you must come back, you know, to read the story. So then somehow there is another long story. And then I thought that I make a story on my sister. You know. So I came back to India and I lent it to uh, Lada, my village. After that, I went to take the hostess. I went with my sister to live together. I said, oh, sister, I want to make a movie on you. Mm. And she thought that I'm making a Bollywood movie. So <laughs> like, you know, all these things. No, 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 because I heard about you don't want like story or like this, you know. And the nursing, one day, like I put a little mic on her, you know. She take her animals in the mountain. She was speaking with the animals. 
because I'm meeting her after maybe 15 years because we were, I was a shepherd with her, like I told you, and then she was just start talking like this. And then I, after that, I came back to our Indian mentality sometimes, you know, like this, you know. <clears throat> I screening this movie in Leh, and many people are, are thinking, oh, this is your real sister? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, it's my real sister. I remember, like, you know, we are born in the same mother, but I don't know if I am my father. But <laughs> I don't know sometimes job, you know. And people not looking the what the wisdom and what the knowledge. They just judgment with the yeah. cloth and judgment with the uh, out, like, you know. This is what the problem it is in come in the beginning. Then, whatever the award we got, I wanted to come my sister in front with me, you know. And then, uh, that's what I was sharing, like, oh, when I was in the European country, when my sister will come. And these movies are not make only make the money, you know, only make the, that I'm becoming a famous. I really not thought at all. I just wanted to make a good movie, you know. But later, with the, the movie becoming very famous, and everybody wanted to uh, see Chering, you know. The story so powerful. Around three months, the hundreds, the lakhs and lakhs of people watch this movie in European countries. Even it is released in theater and all this. And I asked to my sister, please, sister, you must come to with me in France. You know? She said, no, 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 I, I'm very happy in only in the mountain. I don't want to come in France. In 2017, embassy and French government said, no, you must bring something, your sister to France. And I asked, and my sister came with me. And we went to uh, embassy in Delhi. And you see her hand, she is working so hard. And then her hand put on the mission for the Mayabitic, mission can recognize her hand. And then later we were in the hotel, we clean our hands after two, three days, it's becoming more soft. And she got the visa, we landed to Paris. After that, we went to this big uh, festival in Autumn. 5,000 people are waiting on her, you know. And this big stage, just imagine, she just went on the stage and took the mic and she said, sorry, I didn't know languages, uh, Hindi, English, French, but I know. She can understand Indian economy through the radio, what is here. She can speak about the Indian economy, you know. But she said, I will sing a song. And she sang a song so beautiful, you know. Really, this is how uh, when we go to the school, when we, uh, like, so we lose this, you know. When she's never been in school, but she sang a song in the, uh, in front of uh, 5,000 people. Overnight, she becoming a celebrity in France. She was in Telegrama magazine, which is a celebrity magazine, you know. To go in this is not like a New York Times, you know. It's a full feature on her. Next morning, she was in um, uh, French newsletter, newspaper. She was uh, invited for, yeah, everywhere. And after a month, she said, Sanjin, I wanted to go to see shepherds in France. There is some shepherds in France. I said, yes, my dear, why not? So we went to Prine in the Alps, you know. There's uh, so many shepherds. Their shepherds are so comfortable. Very like, uh, like you know, and uh, uh, some, somewhere the shepherd bringing things through the helicopter. And she said, oh, shepherd, it's a helicopter. You know, she was so surprised. <laughs> yeah. After what happened, and she said, like, you know, my work is also very important, you know what I'm doing. And because otherwise, shepherd is not a famous. When you say you are a filmmaker, you are a teacher, you are a doctor, you are a scientist, oh, wow, you are. You know. When we talk about the shepherd, mm -hmm. ah, shepherds in the mountains, you know. So that I wanted to break, you know. I wanted to, that's why I make a shepherd association. I have a company called MLXM House. Why not shepherd as a Google? Why not a shepherd as a school? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I started the shepherd association in Lala. 